On our approach, Bhutan emerges through the clouds. The snow-capped Himalayas pierce the sky above as our plane weaves its way through the lush green valleys for a landing. Welcome to Bhutan, ladies and gentlemen. We have now arrived at Paro International Airport. Please keep your mobile phones switched off and remain seated with your seat belt on. <laughs> Welcome to Bhutan. Nestled at the top of the world between China and India, Bhutan is the last Himalayan Buddhist kingdom, the kingdom of the Thunder Dragon. It's a remote country by geography and a secluded nation by choice, intent on preserving its own identity. You might know it as the country that measures its development by happiness the world's happiest Asian nation. In the early 1970s, their beloved king at the time declared that gross national happiness is more important than gross national product. He made it clear that Bhutan will only develop at a pace that made their citizens happy, their own pace and their own terms. There are no fast food chains, no smoking, and limits on mass tourism. The first road was only paved in 1961, the year I was born. And in 1999, they were the last nation in the world to embrace television. And they are still managing without a single traffic light in the entire country. It's a nation at a crossroad, embracing its past, deciding its future, while fiercely defending its heritage. But that's not why I'm here. It's Bhutan's relationship with what they call white gold, water. This landlocked nation's relationship with water has made the Bhutanese into being one of the most environmentally progressive nations in the world. And it's reflected in their passion. I feel that climate change is really happening and then I can see the real living example as global warming is really and uh, uh, definitely a man-made. Including those of Bhutan's first class of law students. Each and every one of us can work for that. You know, we just have to clear our mindset and make it very clear that, you know, individually can take up a step to you know, saving our nature, saving our environment. Sandwiched between the world's worst and third worst carbon emitters, the Bhutanese are forced to live in a very real precipice of climate change. This man is Bhutan's Prime Minister. Prime Minister, it's, it's, it's Bob Woodruff from ABC out of New York. Chairing Topge, Prime Minister of the Kingdom of Bhutan, and I invite him to address the General Assembly. We have ratified the Paris Agreement and we are well on our way to fulfilling our pledges. 72% of our country is under forest cover and more than half our country is protected as national parks, wildlife sanctuaries and nature reserves. What this means is that we are the world's only carbon neutral country. In fact, we are a carbon negative country. Bhutan is a carbon sink. It absorbs three times more carbon than it emits. But even that hardly offsets the emissions of its neighbors. They can only try to lead by example. As a landlocked mountainous country, we are especially vulnerable to the effects of climate change. And that's why we are particularly alarmed at unchecked environmental degradation, the root cause of climate change. Those same peaks that welcomed us and framed their beautiful country are also like a sword hanging over their head. Bhutan is part of what is called the Third Pole, better known as the Tibetan Plateau, the roof of the world. It's the source of no less than 10 river systems across Asia and a freshwater source for 1.3 billion people. And like the other two poles to the north and south, the ice is melting. A 2012 American Geophysical Union study showed that if the average temperature in Bhutan continues to rise just one degree Celsius, a quarter of Bhutan's glaciers would eventually melt away. 
Today, the melting glaciers are already filling 2,600 glacial lakes to the brim. So you've seen the water, is the water higher? Yeah, definitely. There's more floods? Everywhere it's flash flood, landslides, people being washed away. In 1994, a glacier lake burst, unleashing a sudden torrent downstream. It became one of the worst natural disasters Bhutan has ever seen. And the Bhutanese are afraid it will happen again. We already experience flash floods, glacial lake outbursts, and severe and erratic weather patterns, the effects of which can be particularly devastating for a poor country. But we will not give up. We will take action. Today, there are 25 glacial lakes in danger of bursting. One of the most dangerous glacier lakes is Totormi, which lies adjacent to the one that burst in 1994. The glacier feeding the lake has been receding at a rate of 250 feet every year. If Totormi's natural barrier bursts, it will almost instantly unleash 14 trillion gallons of water into the river valleys below, a tsunami from the sky. And in its path down the Mail River, the old Bhutanese seat of power, Bunaka, and its historic fortress. Twenty-three-year-old Pasang Tamag grew up next to the river. Your mom has uh, prepared some rice along with the potato curry, <laughs> and father wants to eat some uh, chili cheese. <laughs> some teas are coming up again. So small kitchen <laughs> Yeah. So we always like a bottle line, believing that. All the sentient beings to rest in peace with those who are gone and those who are still alive to live longer and to be peaceful every day. Ah, so every morning. Yeah, every so. morning. So. Ah, so, you, so you drew that, you painted this. Yeah. Pasang loved the water so the even as a young boy. Yeah, Is that the river there? Yeah, the river was there. People say like that, what oil to the Iraq is uh, oil similar is you know, water to the Bhutan. Oil is to Iraq, yeah. <laughs> water is to you. Yeah. So during 1994, we'll find, uh, we have a huge flood at the Mail River due to outbursts of Glacier Lake. Yeah. Uh, my father was uh, here. He was doing some. Uh, he was doing his duty out here. Actually, he was driving a police vehicle. He was a driver for a police. He's the chief of police. You, you saved people who were actually uh, quite bad. At that time, uh, our many prisoners and guards are staying nearby uh, Mail River. At that time, we rushed from Thimpu to here to rescue them. Did your family fall in love with the river growing up? No, no. So they, they don't. They never even go to the river. <laughs> really? While most Bhutanese respect their fast flowing rivers, many keep their distance, fearing that they will be swept away. Yeah, my two friends died even oh, when, just, were, when, yeah, when they were more. little, so oh, they, they were they they drowned. Drowned. Yeah, they were drowned. Which makes Pasang's career choice even more surprising. Okay, one, two, three. He is a river guy. His future is linked with the water. Now Pasang, river guy, this is his river guy. Oh yeah. The bank of the river are being eroded. So now they are cursed constructing these kinds of walls so, oh. so that they can protect the very corner of the banks of the river. What did they do this? Yeah. Is this after the, shortly after the 1994? Yes, sir. After, the, after that. How, how wide was this back then compared to now? Now it is much more wide, double of the size of the river. It, twice as yes, wide sir. as it was before? Yes, sir. Because of that 1994? Yes, sir. Wow. Do you think global warming is uh, man-made? <laughs> I surely say that global warming is a man-made thing on You're not a doubter. That's no, I sure. don't have any doubt. <laughs> you live amongst it. Yes, yeah, sir. Uh, 
like you say. Nice to meet you. How are you doing? How was it out there? Yo, awesome, sir. Yeah? My guest. Yeah. Are you seeing a, a change in the water because the, the glaciers are melting faster? Every day the river line changes. Every year it's increasing. That's why sometimes you can see. So if river increases this uh, this much this year, it will increase more than that. Really, it just keeps year. going higher and higher. Yeah, it keeps on increasing. So you have to change the yeah. way you you yeah. raft. So how we hit the rapid? So we don't concern, but we concern how we come out from the rapid. The trees which are planted at site of the rivers all are falling, and they are being brought by the. Oh, rivers. the trees are getting washed yes. into the into the into the rivers. Uh, so it make, that makes it a little more dangerous. Yeah, of course. Sir. So you know this river more than anybody else. You grew, yeah, you grew up right here on it. Yeah, I know each and every waves of this river. <laughs> yeah, but you'll be able to raft this river for the yeah, rest of, of your life. You just have to change the way you, that you do it. Yeah, of course. The river is like mother for me. Like, like my mother. It fits me. So that's why every time it changes, I wonder why. Waterkeeper. Also traveling in Bhutan is the Waterkeeper Alliance, a U.S.-based advocate for clean water and free-flowing rivers. They are in the country to recruit locals to protect the rivers. Nobody's doing anything, so if we don't do anything, we get bad. So there's no responsibility from the government, Sometimes the they're doing government. Yeah. Yeah. The river guides are their best candidates. We're here to help the local people. The local people know what's wrong. They are experiencing the problems and, and they're trying their best to speak up. We have people on the front lines of climate change who have done no harm to this world, yet they're suffering all the harm from the rest of the world. The glacial waters from the Totormi empty into the mighty fast-flowing Potru, the Mail River. That churning white water is Bhutan's white gold. The only way to feel its power is to ride it with the professionals. What's the, is this class three? Class three and four. So, class four. so we're going to go out here with uh, both waterkeeper people from, from the U.S. and also the locals will show us how to take the, uh, the rapids well. Yes, it's, and you know, you are the people who are closest to the river. The water keepers introduce us to Kinle Dorji, a river guide, an activist they are trying to recruit. How far, how, how far is the glacier from here? Oh, six days, like six days. So we started in the, uh, in the glacier right now. It would take us six days to come down, come down. to where we are. That's river guides here. They know the beauty of Bhutan and they see the destruction happening to the rivers of Bhutan. And uh, Kinley and others like him are very concerned about all the damming that's happening. It's happening at a very rapid pace, and uh, we need to make sure that it's, uh, it's done carefully. Yeah. OK, so today we are going to do battle raft. So it's all about three walls and pole. Me and Paul, here, and high five! Woo! Okay, Tim, ready? Yeah. Okay, all back paddle, Tim. All back, all back. All back. All back. Okay, stop, right back. back, left forward. Right back, left forward, left forward. Lean okay. and pull, lean and pull, lean and pull. Forward, high! This is why it's valuable. The Bhutanese government wants to harness this power with a network of hydroelectric plants. Oh, oh, stop! stop! Relax, relax. How was it? All right, so it was, I think, a lot rougher 
than we thought. In some ways, the, the glaciers getting warmer and melting faster is good for your business. Good for us, but it's bad for the environment. environment. Yes. Hydro power plants. Do you like those or hate those? Or somewhere in the middle. The opposite. <laughs> well, I would say we kind of like hate the hydro problems because all the good rivers have been dammed so far now. But on the other hand, you know, it's the highest budget of the time, so you cannot say anything. It's making your country some money. Yeah. yeah. So one way, it is the main economic you know, uh, incentive for the country. And in other way, I think it's challenging also to dam all the rivers. They try to dam the river in an eco-friendly manner, but, but of course, in other way, we, we are damaging the environment, but they are trying to make a set of eco-friendly dams. At the Panaka Fortress, the male river merges with the female river to form the mighty Puna Tsang Tru, where two dams are being built. Here, another Bhutanese waterkeeper is less equivocal about his opposition. Pasang's boss, Toby. <laughs> Toby takes us downstream to one of the country's major hydropower projects called Puna Sang Chu One to see the impact of the construction for ourselves. As we approach, the scenery changes. This, in large part, is how Bhutan is planning to stay carbon neutral, build enough dams, harness their melting glaciers, and mitigate their country's climate impact. The government has jumped all in into hydropower at the expense of their mighty rivers. Bhutan is very supportive of the building of these dams and these turbines so they can create electricity, then they export out to uh, other countries, largely India, uh, for money. It's the, it's the biggest income for this country. So this is where they're now building the, what will be the permanent dam. Essentially blocked off the water and a temporary dam up there to block the river. Eventually it's going to flow down here, go through the wall and then into a turbine where they're going to get all their energy. I'm from India, Mr. Gali. You're from India? Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. I am it working like at most, Delhi. It seems like most of the workers here are from India. Yes, yes. Uh, what are you doing with these? This is the, just we are widening the road. Because oh, they have to widen the road, yes, okay. Yes, yes. Gotcha. You know what it is, Toby? You look this way and you get to see beauty. Ah. And you look this way, they got construction in the modern world. Yeah. Right? Do you want any dams at all? Yeah, yeah. I I want the view that uh, there should be some uh, electricity that, that generates revenue for the government. But it should not be all the rivers, you know. Some rivers should be kept free. What about this river? This river is already screwed, you know. There's <laughs> two, two dams on it. Might as well utilize it now, you know. Your opposition to it, is it because it, it destroys the beauty of the country, the natural beauty of Bhutan, or is it, does it create pollution, kill fish? What is the, the reason for it for you? It is not natural. It's just not natural? It is not natural. I'm a uh, whitewater enthusiast, and I like rivers. Uh, look, at, look, look, look down at the valley today, there's no river. If you, if you thought about it, like what percentage of the people in this country are against the dams? as opposed to for the dams? I think 90% of the people have no clue about the dams. You know. The negative impact or the positive impact, they really don't care, they, and they don't know. It's the 10% 10, 10 that uh, are fighting over this. So you're saying they're kind of brainwashed? Yeah, it's everybody, it's like, you know, on the media all the time, you know, how much money hydropower is going to bring in, and how good it is, you know. And once we have the dams, you know, then we don't have to work, you know. It's, going to bring in so much money. The Prime Minister is very much in favor of it. He likes the idea. In addition, we generate and export clean, renewable energy and invest in green industry. Maybe he sees it as a, a, a resource that for the, in the future. But again, as, what are we losing for that uh, resource? You know? So you think that we can, we can stop this from happening? I don't think we can stop this from happening, but I think we can mitigate and leave some of the rivers. Slow it down. 
the whole thing is to piece it, you know, and then do, do one project at a time and look at the impact and carry on. But uh, what we have done is we've jumped in with both our feet, you know, and now there's no going back. We have like five or six projects going on at the same time. This project is just one of five projects under construction right now, with at least another 10 in various stages of development. In 2016, hydropower represented nearly 37% of Bhutan's exports and 8% of its GDP. The Asian Development Bank forecasts that Bhutan's growth will hit 8% this year. Buoyed by this construction and hydropower exports, they become the fastest growing economy in South Asia. Maybe here on this yeah. corner, yeah. The Bhutanese government claims they have only tapped 5% of their hydropower potential. So this is where it comes out. Yeah. Turns to a beautiful free flow again. Again. <laughs> yeah. So this is what it used to look like. Yes. The way it is right yes. down there. Once it gets through, it looks beautiful. Yeah. But the, but the, but the, but the question is, are they building too many too quickly? Too many too quickly. There certainly is some opposition to these dams, but it is very minimal. I think Toby is certainly a minority in the, in the sense that he's one of the few that's fighting this. Are you, are you for or against the dams being put in? Yeah, I am, I'm, I'm for the motion, sir. Again, it's, it's helping most of the Buddhist people out here. So due to the construction of that hydro project, again, government has promised within 2020, whole the button each and every corner will be lighter right. we don't want to dam at least that's not dam one river in Bhutan. we must have you know, without damming from from the end to the top to the glacier so the free flow free flow it's a child but it's on the way to make it one at least we are fighting for that and hope hope that my and our, our other friends our dreams come true i'd say most say that they did not have this kind of hydropower, they would not have enough money to support an independent country without too much polluting factories and development. So this is, in most minds, it is a hope that this will make this country independent and, and, and clean and green. Now many say, listen, you're running out of time. We gotta do it quickly, and that is the debate. Look at this place. If the temperatures continue to rise and the glaciers disappear, so too will the water source for these river guides, farmers, and the hydropower plants. This water, it turns out, can eventually run dry. Back in the rapidly growing capital of Timpu, Nice. As the outside world further encroaches, uh, a lot of construction going on. the stress of development can clearly be seen. A generation of Bhutanese are trying to push the conversation forward, that their environment is essential. The U.S. we pulled out of the uh, the Paris Agreement. So, uh, oh yeah, they pulled out. But then I think uh, our government is sticking with that whatever was discussed in the Paris, and they'll go ahead with whatever the other countries go. What do the people of Bhutan generally think about the United States pulling out of the Paris Agreement? You know, they're actually not happy because they know how important the environment is, and from through that, how much it has benefited us. So th this shocks me. Some, like Nadup Sering, who runs an NGO called Clean Bhutan, has turned himself into a cartoon. That's me. To bring awareness to a growing waste and pollution problem in Bhutan. Out of sight is out of mind. Yeah. Yeah. So what we do is we throw it in the stream, it washes off into nope. the river. You never see it. And then you never see it and it's out of your mind. <laughs> Oh my God, I need to do this little mascot of myself. 
which my daughter drew. <laughs> thought that is me. So I put it up, and now people are like looking at it, and it, 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 it gives a little bit of what do you call it? new approach. A superstar. He's <laughs> now famous. And others, like Cheku, a radio anchor for Bhutan Broadcasting Service, spreads the message on his shows. Welcome back to the English service of the DBS Radio. You are still listening to 88.193 and 96, and also we are and uh, following the recent incident of bear attack. It is radio is the most reliable source of news and information for them, to, to those people in the rural areas. So that's why, I mean, whatever we broadcast from here, Whatever you throw, it will come back to you. So mind your beast. Uh, starting from a PSA to songs to the programs, they listen from A to Z. And waiting in the wings, the first class of homegrown environmental lawyers at the country's first law school. I know we can cause the biggest impact in this world if we have the sense of responsibility and gratitude. This is what every nation, every nation in the other countries have and this is also what Bhutan should have. Congratulations, top 25 students. <laughs> the Bhutanese have seen the world change on the outside. They have seen it firsthand from their polluted neighbors and how that change threatens the very roof over their heads and even the white gold that sustains their country. Now it's up to them how that same change comes to their home. Goodness. Most of my adult life, I have wanted to come to Bhutan. Are we here right now, or is this some kind of a, a movie? Call it Tok Chong. Tok Chong. Most of the people we talk to, even those who have lived and regularly traveled abroad, expressed their luck in being born into this pristine country. <laughs> Bhutan is not a country living in the past, but rather a country that is fighting for its future to still look like this. See anything else around here? Hi. Hello. Hi there. Hi. Yep. You want to see yourself? Ready? Okay. There you are. Who's that? Who's that? <laughs> it's the first time you saw your safe on tape, huh? <laughs> yep. That's right. That's right, cameras bring peace. You want to see it this way? Oh, you want to shoot me? Here. Here, now you can shoot me. Look. Look, you get you. There you go. <gasps> what do you think? Oh, yeah, there's me. Good job. Go interview your mom. Go shoot your mom. <laughs> <laughs> but you're going to get a job, though, as a cameraman for ABC. High five. Good job. Okay. <laughs> High five. <laughs> he wants your camera now. <laughs>